One of the powerful tools out there for people that are really concerned about keeping some of their online activities private or secret is a system called Tor. We've talked about Tor before, a little bit how about how Tor works, but I want to explain a little bit about Tor and how it enables private browsing. So what's the core problem for most uh, people that are using the internet? Well, if I'm, I've got my computer open and I'm going to a website, the communication between my computer and the website, the contents might be encrypted. So if I'm smart, I'm using an encrypted connection across the internet. But remember, the IP protocol, those packets that are uh, traveling from my computer to the, the destination and in the other direction. So all the traffic that's going back and forth between me and the commuter that I'm communicating with, the IP packets have our addresses in them unencrypted form and so this communication the fact that I'm communicating with the website is completely visible to the entire internet that's how the internet works that's how the IP protocol works so every time this packet is being routed across the internet every router that touches that packet knows where the packet came from and it knows where the packet is going and so in order to communicate securely let's say I don't want anyone to even know that I'm visiting this website or that I'm communicating with this other computer it's pretty much impossible given the structure of the internet in this way. I have to trust every single router along the path, and I don't. So what do I do? The way the Tor works is Tor has a whole network of computers that participate in the Tor protocol. Um, so I've got a bunch of computers that are part of the internet that run Tor. And the details of how Tor encapsulates and de-encapsulates messages are not our focus here. Instead, we want to show how Tor can be used to conceal the fact that I'm communicating with this particular website. So remember, if I use the IP protocol, source and destination are always visible. So what does Tor allow me to do? So what Tor allows me to do is, instead of communicating directly with the server, I send information to a Tor node. So I connect to a node that's part of the Tor network. Um, and in this message, in the contents that are encrypted, is something that I want to send to this particular server. But keep in mind, I'm not connecting to that server. I'm connecting to a Tor server. So what this server will do is it'll take my message and it will, now here's the thing. If this server took my message and immediately sent it to the destination, then it would be very easy to monitor this server which I suspect that a lot of governments do monitor nodes in the Tor network and figure out what was going on. So for example, if all this guy did was take my message and send it onto the destination, it would be fairly easy to defeat this approach because I could just see, oh, okay, well, computer A sent a message to this Tor node and then it immediately sent it to computer B. And so now I know who's communicating with each other. I don't want that. Um, instead, what Tor does is this computer takes the message and sends it here and sends it here and sends it here and sends it here and maybe sends it back here and sends it here. So the message bounces around inside this Tor network for a while until it reaches what's called an exit node. And the exit node then finally sends that message um, to, to the destination. Now, why does this work? Well, it works because while I'm communicating with the Tor network, so are a lot of other people. So there's somebody else over here that's potentially using Tor to conceal their communications, and so they're sending their own messages. And by the time these messages bounce around enough in the Tor network, it's very difficult to determine. Um, so if somebody was monitoring this particular node, eventually they see that this Tor node sends a message to the server. So I know that somewhere out um, on the network, somebody sent a message to this particular server, but I have no idea who it was because once I mix enough of these messages together, um, the identity of the computer that initiated this message is concealed. And that's the sort of the fundamental way that Tor works. Um, and so I can use this approach, and if it's particularly effective if a lot of people are using it to conceal my communications because anyone that can any so all of this traffic is encrypted and until the uh, the message leaves the tor network um, i don't know where it's going so even these even all the nodes within the tor network themselves don't know the final destination of the message that's part of the beauty of how tor sort of wraps things together um, and so i can use all this traffic and sort of it's almost like i'm taking all this information is mixing it up really good mixing it up so that 
um, you know, all of the Tor X, nodes that are part of the Tor exit protocol are constantly sending messages to bunches of different computers, um, but no one can tell who originated that message. And so this is the way that Tor is used and why Tor is such an important part of how the internet works um, or, or how to use the internet if you're really concerned about making sure that you're, um, that not just the contents of your communications, but your communication patterns are concealed.